The first update of 2025 is here, and in this version of Cascager, we're happy to introduce in betweening. You only create a couple of keyframes, and the motion between them will be generated automatically. And it's not just interpolation, it actually generates movement between different poses. And all the generation is done locally on your computer. We've recorded hundreds of animations for the dataset ourselves, mostly focusing on locomotion. Changing the timings and adding different poses will also affect the kind of animation you will get. And once the animation is generated, you can further edit it, unbake it, clean up the feet, and use autophysics. This is our very first version of in-betweening, but it already does a very decent job at locomotion. The character can move in different directions, walk, run, turn around, and so on. Autoposing has been significantly improved. You now have a much better control over the hips and the back of the character. Also, you no longer have to worry that the pose that you created using point controller or else will reset when using autoposing. Now you'll get a pop-up window where you can set autoposing to activate all the necessary points to preserve the pose 100%. We'll also continue to improve the ragdoll. You can now set ragdoll behavior to multiple characters and connect them with each other. From now on, any geometry can be used as a collidable mesh. Or you can generate convex meshes based on the geometry that you have. Working with autophysics has become more flexible. You can now decide how much you want autophysics to correct your animation using a slider. The lower the setting is, the closer the autophysics result will be to the original. You can use Priority Frame to mark the most important frames of your animation, and Cascager will preserve the poses and build the physics around them. This is especially useful when animating jumps with rotations in the air. Animation unbaking has been improved and now allows you to unbake the selected tracks of the character while preserving the rest of the animation. We've also added a couple improvements to the user interface. You can now call the context menu with the right mouse button, where you can set the pivot or display the trajectory for the selected point. We plan to add more functions to the context menu in the future. But if you are used to moving the pivot with the right mouse button, you can change it back in the viewport input settings. Or use the hotkey Alt right mouse button click by default. The start window now features news where you can keep up with the latest updates, and we added descriptions to various buttons and menus in the interface. 